Right? We're talking all about wearables, all about Internet of Things. Um, we even talked about Fitbits and health and activity, activity monitoring. But to date, most of that conversation has been focused around the health of humans, right? You know, you and I were relatively self-centered as the species. Um, now I'd like to look at using Internet of Things wearables for tracking pets. Um, and I've got to zoom out first before we jump into this article. Um, there's a story really relevant to my life, and I don't know if it, if you saw it as well, Forbode, but there was a lost dog in Northern Virginia, and it like went viral on social media. 5.1 million people saw this post. It was this like no way. white and gray whippet dog that was running around through the woods, and it ran around for three, four days in the woods, in the snow, in sub-zero temperatures. People were oh genuinely God. worried for this dog. Right. Um, and great, you know, happy ending to the story. Dozens of people searched for days. Um, people were up, you know, all night sitting out in their cars waiting to see if they saw this dog. The dog was eventually found and returned to its owner and it's safe and it went to the vet and it's okay. So we can all smile based on that. Okay, great. Yeah. But this led me to you know, look at some statistics from this article, you know, back to, back to our podcast episode. One third of all pet dogs and cats in the U.S. are reported missing at least once during their lifetime. So that means if you own a wow. dog or a cat, there's like relatively, you know, one third, 33% chance that that animal that you love and you care for will go missing at least one point during their lifetimes. Um, and over 10 million pets are lost or stolen in the U S every year. So if we've got wearable technology, that's ubiquitous, you know, it's inexpensive for humans. You or I could get a, you know, relatively low quality, but you know, it, it works well. And it does this job for less than a hundred bucks on Amazon, get a wearable. Why can't this be applied to pets as well? Right. Um, I mean, we've pets, they're, they're your best friend. They're part of your family. You, if there's a solution that could you know, help keep them safe, or at least you know where they are if they ever get lost, why wouldn't you invest yeah. in it? And so, so I'm and thinking why isn't it a thing? the emotional distress that the owner went through, the distress that the dog went through, um, right. the productivity lost from dozens, dozens of people searching for it physically and millions of people scrolling past it on Facebook. Um, you know, that kind of, I guess this is a, a little bit of an economist mind here, but I'm saying, look at all that lost productivity and there's probably a two or $300 solution somewhere that could solve it. Um, it's the program manager in you coming out. Yeah, I respect maybe, it. Maybe a little bit, but I'm sure that owner would gladly have spent two or $300 to know where that dog is and to yeah. not go through that distress of searching for it for four days in the woods. Um, and so we have internet of things. We have wearables relatively, you know, nailed down in terms of getting the technology where it needs to be. Um, with location tracking, um, and also people are starting to collectively acknowledge veterinarians, pet owners, etc., that most pets, especially dogs, um, need a healthy level of exercise, diet, rest, etc., for optimal well-being to you know make sure that it's healthy throughout its entire life, and then also to extend that lifespan. Um, this is no surprise to me, right? We're all we're mammals just like dogs are. We need to watch our diet. We need to exercise. We need to rest properly to make sure we live a long and healthy life. Um, and so do they. Yeah. So like I said, humans are relatively self-centered species. Now we're starting to focus on man's best friend, which is dogs and cats there as well, right? Um, how do we make sure that we are tracking our pets, you know, like we do our humans when we care about them and making sure that their activity is monitored so that their health is taken care of like we do humans? Um and the folks who wrote this article, Nordic Semiconductor, they're actually basically the market leader in making chips for Bluetooth low energy and for cellular gotcha. protocols for Internet of Things. So this is right up their alley, and they're actually, their chips are used in some of the solutions that I'm about to mention. But I'm going to talk yeah. about the secret sauce here. For both, you might Spill know it. more about it or even better than I do because um, your job is in the Internet of Things space. But I'm going to talk about the two... Uh, technologies that we can rely on here for short range internet of things and long range internet of things and this is just having you know a wearable device something on the dog or the cat that is connected to the greater cloud through wi-fi or through bluetooth or through cellular um, so that you can one tell the location of it and two collect data like heart rate and steps and all these other things and sleep like we were talking about with Fitbits and then communicate that back to your phone or to your computer where you can analyze that data and get some insights on how your loved one, your, your pet is doing. So short range internet of things, they typically rely on at least these solutions for pets is Bluetooth low energy. And it's similar to the way that, you know, 
your Bluetooth headphones, your AirPods might connect to your iPhone or whatever. Um, it's a newer protocol of Bluetooth that is the most, at least widely available energy efficient communication between a wearable and a phone to share activity data, health recommendations, etc. And it also does short range tracking of pets to nearby devices. And one of the people that rely on that is Amazon with their sidewalk program. So everyone might have, you know, some Amazon type device in their house and Echo, Alexa, whatever. Um, they use Bluetooth Low Energy if you have a lost pet or a lost item that was stolen. You can use Bluetooth Low Energy to see which one it has the strongest signal connection to. And if that location is known, then you can basically say that there's you have a really strong guess based on Bluetooth Low Energy that you know the thing that you're tracking, in this case the pet that you like, is really, really close to this echo that's in your neighbor's house. So you might say, that, oh, it might have jumped the fence to my neighbor's yard. Um, Long-range Internet of Things relies on the cellular networks that our phone uses to text and call one another and access the Internet while we're driving in the car. Those cellular networks it would use an LTE slash M chip, um, which is used for remote tracking and connectivity even miles and miles away from any other IoT-enabled device. So they say, right. with these two ingredients in their secret sauce, short-range tracking and data transfer as well as long-range tracking, um, they're able to make a solution that takes care of those you know, two main things we were talking about with taking care of pets, which is one, their location, and then two, their activity and health data. So there are some companies like Link, which is making a smart collar wearable for pets to track their whereabouts using, they're using Nordic semiconductor chips that for the both Bluetooth low energy, as well as remote tracking using the LTE-M chip. And there's also this, I would say on the further out on the horizon is this company called Vet Chip that's making an embeddable chip. So you put it inside the you know inside the animal probably buried somewhere in their skin a small chip that is designed specifically to monitor the pet health so it relies mostly wow. on bluetooth but also location services are can be enabled in case of emergency so they they require you know it requires higher energy consumption to do uh location services but in case of emergency you can try to track this thing down otherwise you can use it for health communications with a chip that's embedded well, if I'm not mistaken, like as of right now, when you take your pet to the vets, they put an RFID chip in them so that if they ever get lost, the vets can scan them and get your information and know that it, like the pet belongs to someone. It's like wearing the collar. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And then now if they can like upgrade that to like a version two and it has capabilities to turn on GPS whenever they're lost, that's that's perfect. And it's it doesn't disrupt the process of getting your cat or your dog chipped anyways. It can just become the norm at that point. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think, um, like we said, a company like Link, or I'm sure there are some other competitors out there as well, making a smart collar wearable. If you're, you know, your animal's already chipped, your pet is already chipped, you're, you're probably not going to go out of your way to get a vet chip for it, especially if this, they're, they're in beta testing or whatever and it costs a lot. But Link, it's commercially available. I think you can get it on Amazon for a few hundred bucks. And like we said, nice. this is making this level of care and focus that we've put on human location and human health available to the loved ones that are part of people's families as well as pets. Nice. Yeah. It, it, what you were saying actually reminded me of a company I heard about. I think it's called like WAG or WAGS. They, it, it's like a Fitbit for dogs or cats. And I think it's actually specifically for wa dogs. That's why it's called WAG. Um, but it monitors their health and you can like set up these uh, fences where you're like, my dog can hang out in this area outside of the house, but I don't want him to run any further. And it has on board like ultrasonic sensors that they can give the dog feedback if they're misbehaving or if they're going a certain way. So that oh, you're so not it's like, like, in addition to passively tracking them and making sure that they're okay, you can actively monitor them and make sure, hey, yeah. you don't go outside of this area. And it bonus points for not shocking the dog. Exactly. <laughs> ultrasonic pulses instead. Yeah, just giving them good feedback, monitoring their health. Imagine if like the Fitbit was giving you life advice, right? That's kind of yeah. what it is for dogs. That's, That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I would say like if we were to boil this down into a few sentences, we have wireless communication protocols that already exist. We have wearable technology that already exists to collect the data. And we even have the applications already existing that collects all that and packages it together to give you insights. We've developed it for years and years and years for humans. They're commercially available. You're going to have one in a few weeks. I'm wearing one on my wrist right now. Just twist this, spin it for pets. It can vastly improve the quality of life of the pets. And I think, again, to that whippet dog, Yuna, that 
he went viral in Northern Virginia for being missing and all these people are helping find it. It could have resolved this four day search that was really stressful on the owner that was really stressful on the dog to probably something in the order of less than an hour. If you know exactly where it was located. Let's just make sure that with this tech, no more Yunas happen, you know, no more instances of our loved pets, best friends going missing. Yeah, exactly. And what, what, to me, it seems like pretty, I hate to use this canned phrase, but low-hanging fruit um, in terms of the solutions that are available and the impact that can be made. So I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing more people adopt this. And whenever I, whenever I get a pet, I might do the same as well. Mm-hmm.